Hello everybody, uh, this is Alex. I am the artist here at Tiger Skull RPG. And uh, yeah, so today what I wanted to do um, is talk a little bit about a uh, release that's on right now, right up on Patreon, uh, Silent Sister Mary. I wanted to talk about her kit a little bit and uh, maybe explain kind of like uh, how, how I thought it would work and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, you can only write down so much in the space that's provided, so I thought I'd give it a little bit more uh, context to uh, how the gameplay might emerge, uh, what I was thinking, that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, so hopefully everything's clear. I mean, uh, when I write this stuff out, it seems clear to me, but um, you know, I've, nobody's going to know better than me, I guess. I wrote this stuff. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Here, here we go. Uh, this is her. Um, Oh, before I continue, let me just say, you know, the, the music we're listening to is uh, from Purple Planet. Okay, I didn't pay for it. So I gotta mention that. It's pretty good. It's uh, very uh, soothing. Um, anyway, let's continue. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about the character a little bit for maybe a high level, just kind of what, uh, maybe, you know, without getting into details, what her background is, what I was thinking. She's kind of a. <clears throat> She is a, like a cleric um, who, you know, her mission was to kind of like uh, go on this crusade to maybe like rid the land of like some, uh, you know, these undead, um, <laughs> undead, bad, evildoer type guys. And, um, you know, her ultimate goal was to, uh, you know, uh, take care of this guy, uh, the reanimation master, Deus Leviat is his name, and he's kind of, uh, you know, he's the welcome package character, and he's what ties all these uh, evil characters together in this series. Uh, he takes, he's taking control of all these characters, and Sister Mary is one of those characters that he's done that uh, too. So she's kind of in this weird state of like, not quite dead, not quite uh, alive, um, and uh, I'll get into uh, the items and how that sort of uh, uh, came to be but um, you know she's like uh, somebody who's kind of you know who's under control is uh, maybe like wasn't a, a bad uh, evil person her entire existence but uh, you know here she is now she's like a minion of her, her evil so there you go um, <clears throat> yeah okay so I want to get into the uh, the cards first I think uh, they kind of give you a little bit of like you know, the cards, every release, I'm trying to make the cards kind of like uh, have a little bit more synergy. The first few cards, I think, were sort of more, I was thinking of them as like loot and uh, not so much tied to the specific character, this, this specific character of the month. So, um, yeah, I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, maybe, maybe in the future I will just kind of do some straight up loot because uh, you know some characters are more simple than others. But I thought that uh, such a strange, you know, this nun character who's hanging out with these undead folks probably, you know, a little bit needs a little bit more backstory kind of explanation as to why that is. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna get into it long form here. Okay, um, so let's start. Let's start over here with her primary weapon. Mary's Crescent. I'll just read what we've got going on. Um, slashing streaks of light shine blinding, severing souls from helpless victims. So the front of the card, uh, if it's a magical item, um, it's going to be kind of like flavor text here a lot of the time. I will call out uh, damage types pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious here. Um, let's really frame into this. Uh, slashing, I'll underline it. I, and italicize it. This does slashing damage. You're gonna roll 1d4, weighs two pounds, it's worth 4k. Um, this symbol up here is a magic uh, item, okay? So it's not really standard gear <clears throat> like uh, in the last release. Uh, this does have a magical uh, element to it, and let's, let's go ahead and read that on the uh, back side here. Mary's Crescent, okay? Uh, endowed unto her malign crescent of five sorcerous stones. Each stone holds the potential to carry the life force of a victim suffered to the murderer's blade. Any physical damage dealt in a single attack action may be stored with a vacant stone. As an action, the uh, user may cast, you know, I say the user because you, you know, you can use this sword on your own, okay? She, this is what 
she will do to you when you encounter her. As an action, the user may cast uh, Streaming Hail to restore HP equal to the amount held within a stone. Conversely, um, the user may instead cast Animus Strike as an action to add the value stored within a stone to their next attack in the form of Radiant Damage. So this is like kind of at a high level, it's a weapon. You don't get any, you're not getting any, uh, you know, plus to your attack. Because we're getting kind of some cool, maybe like the Streaming Hail is basically like a, it's sort of like a life steal that you, instead of getting instantly, you have to kind of take an action to, um, to, um, you know, make use of. So we've got five stones here, and each of those holds, um, you know, an attack values you know, worth of, uh, uh, you know, uh, points or whatever, I guess, just like a number. Um, so you'll attack somebody, you do maybe, I don't know, 10 damage. Okay, one of your stones now has a value of 10 in there, and you can use that <clears throat> um, later on to heal yourself, or if you want to add to an attack later uh, and really juice up that attack, you can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> but uh, because this is an action, uh, you have to take an action beforehand to prime your strike. So you don't get to just like deal like five wicked, uh, you know, blows in a row. Um, what, what you might do is um, make some kills, you know, charge up your stones, and then, um, <clears throat> you know, before your next encounter, or when the encounter's over, then cast Anima Strike, and then you know your next strike will have um, uh, an attack value added to it, so when so you can really hit the guy hard, and maybe you can get opportunity of attack, and like uh, you know, like sneak up on somebody, and uh, really just do a, a sickening blow to them. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so you do have to spend an action to use this stuff. It's not quite, you know, you don't get to just attack and freely use all this stuff. But that's kind of what I was thinking with that blade. It's pretty powerful, I think, um, especially if you have your own. Uh, if your character has their own uh, modifiers to, to uh, beef up your attack. Um, so, yeah, uh, good luck with that. Okay, let's move on here. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna move across to... Okay, let's look at the Edge of Fealty. So this is also uh, just kind of a standard... Um, you know, you're not getting any benefits off this. It's just kind of just a standard sword. It's not really meant to be the kind of loot that you're like upgrading your weapon because um, it's really like, this is kind of, uh, it's less of a gameplay magical item and more of sort of like a story enhancer, I would say. Um, alright, so let's read this out. There's more to death than what we have known. An eternal oath is made, slashing down fate's call. Okay, so slashing again. <clears throat> um, yeah. The Edge of Fealty, I'll just quickly explain the back here. The Edge of Fealty grants second life to the dying. With the blood words spoken, and by embedding the blade into the form of another, a ghastly version of the recipient's former self manifests. The recipient figure loses any sense of good or, good and evil, good or evil, and lives to serve the interest of he or she who bespoke the blood words. Okay, so at a high level without trying to be too fancy about it what this blade is doing it's you know what it is is it's basically like the master ball in Pokemon <laughs> in a way you um, you're about to kill your your your, uh, your enemy whoever it is you stab this in as your last action um, and uh, instead of killing them this the figures kind of lingering in sort of this undead state and they are, um, they are, uh, you know, in your control. You kind of you know, take control of them. And I don't actually I don't even know. Well, I, I'm trying to think back. I went back and forth on how to design this figure, and, I'm, and um, I don't think I even broke the mechanics of to that level of detail where you, it just had to be your like a like a uh, like a last hit or like a death dealing blow. I think it's more of like if I were a DM, I would play this. More as like a you know a story kind of um, you know it's not a it's not an attack it's not an attack thing it's like my character is going to use this this item and it's 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 
it's a bit of a negotiation with your DM of whether the situation is appropriate and would make sense to do that. So, um, so this is what was used to uh, take control of Mary by uh, the reanimation master. Who, you know, that's his thing. He's all about uh, control and controlling others to do his bidding and all that. Uh, I think another cool use for this blade would be, um, <clears throat> you know, because you know, uh, look at the, you know, it's worth. I mean, it's weird to put value on magical items, uh, but you know, it has a value. It's not as much as the others. It's just a regular blade. It's you know, uh, it is what it is as far as a weapon. But I, what I would use it for is maybe there's a mount or a wild beast you want to tame with it, and then uh, you know, maybe um, again, I would I would open this up to interpretation from your DM to decide how you what kind of uh, checks he wants you to uh, or she wants you to pass in order to do this. But you take. You know, you can take control of like a beast and mount it. And now, you know, whether that thing was like some wild, crazy creature before, uh, now it's in your control as long as the sword is, you know, stuck into the back of it. So it's just kind of a magical item, just kind of to explain uh, how that uh, how that control is taking place. <clears throat> um, okay, finally, we have the hollowed pendant, and uh, I'll just read this. Uh, this item, I. I like, uh, I know there was a lot of, when I was planning this item, there was a lot of like, I was kind of really debating a different, a lot of different uses, so let's just kind of refresh my memory here. Um, okay, Hallowed Pendant. Looking fixedly into the heart of the pendant, it feels as if the ruby gazes back. Uh, this is kind of just flavor in this instance. This isn't a weapon, so I don't have to call out any damage here, which is where I usually uh, call out damage types. Um, but um, yeah, it's just kind of flavor text on this on these purely magical items. I almost made it a trinket, but because I wanted to give it some stats, uh, it became this uh, magical item. Here. So it's pretty light. Um, it's worth not a ton. I guess you know that. I mean, that's quite a bit, but. Compared to a lot of magical items, they're worth quite a bit more. But this is kind of more of a, a sentimental item to Mary, and it just has some uh, some uh, kind of stat altering uh, abilities to really just push you further into your cleric role. <clears throat> um, okay, well let's read the back here. Her father's pendant granted Mary assurance on her crusade to see that Deus Levi was laid to rest, but she was lost and her relinquished soul lingers eternally in service of the reanimation master. Uh, death saving throws are rolled at advantage, which is great when you're dying, uh, you're unconscious or whatever, and they're trying to kill you, you get a bit get more uh, likelihood to survive there. Assume the following skill modifications as the hollowed pendant is in your possession. So um, the way I thought this is like even if you're just kind of holding on to this thing, you're, it's going to alter your um, it's going to alter your state a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so uh, there we go. Perception, you get an extra perception point. That never hurts. Obviously, religion plus three. You're going to lose some intimidation and deception. You seem like kind of the opposite. Of skills for somebody who might uh, covet something like this. So I really wanted this to be used just kind of for uh, you know, religious kind of characters. <clears throat> um, yeah, what I was gonna say, I thought I had something else to say about this item. Um, yeah, that's what it ended up being, just kind of a little buff item. Something about her. I had planned on making it um, sort of more of a an item like I really wanted to make an item that sort of saves your state, and uh, so if you die, it kind of brings you back to where you were as a character at that time. But I just was having a hard time balancing that on one card, and it felt kind of video gamey. Maybe I'll revisit that idea in the future, but um, for now, it's more of just kind of standard, kind of magical buff. Um, well, there's some debuff there too. Uh, I don't want it. I don't want these items to be just pure power, like more power. So uh, that's what happened there. Okay, so those are her items. That's what, that's what you get after the kill. Uh, again, like typically with these uh, releases, a legendary release, uh, some of the items are drops. Like in this case, I would say these are all drops. But some of them, I think, 
um, are items that you, as a DM, I would suggest, uh, you know, exposing to the player before the encounter so that they can make use of them. Like in the case of, like uh, last month's um, legendary release, the Disciple of Puppets, he has this decanter of souls as one of his items. That, uh, you know, you find it and you're allowed to, uh, you know, store some souls in there and do some, uh, take some actions with those souls. So, uh, and that's an item that I wouldn't use as a drop. I'd use it more as like, maybe you find it on the journey somewhere, somehow, uh, on the way and make use of it. Anywho, let's move on. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's get into this 5e sheet here, okay? <clears throat> um, Silent Sister Mary, Medium Undead Humanoid, and Neutral Evil, okay? So she is, this is like kind of as she's under control, um, and as a villain, you know? Um, her uh, character prior to being um, controlled in this way, I wouldn't say is neutral evil, but, um, you know, it's kind of just like, I think any time you use that edge, um, you're going to assume more of a neutral um, uh, alignment because you're doing the bidding of somebody else and you're kind of in this undead state and you have a ton of your own desires, so that's where she landed there. Okay, um, armor class 12, leather armor, she just kind of has, like, you can see it here, just like, you know, a few, um, she's not wearing much, to be honest, so there, there you have it, but she's, she's got some leather on her. Um, hit points, she's, um, you know, roughly level 11 character here, so I figured that out. The way I do this, um, you know, it's kind of ambiguous how this math works, but, you know, you assume you roll 11 d8, and then you add, um, and then you add to that, um, uh, according to your uh, class and stuff, and we're assuming that she's a cleric here, so... That's where we're getting the uh, health points from, uh, level 11, roughly. <clears throat> okay, um, she's got um, <laughs> she's got some stats, I think, that you would expect of a character like that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, saving throws, constitution, intelligence, skills, religion, obviously, insight, perception. You're not getting much past this chick. Um, necrotic, she's undead, um, you know, she's enchanted, that's not gonna work. Psychic stuff, good luck. Uh, condition, immunities, frightened, you can't frighten her, you can't charm this girl, you know, maybe you've got that uh, uh, character in your party who's kind of a ladies' man. Um, that might be a funny uh, thing to play up, but it's not gonna work. Uh, senses, all the well, not, maybe not all, but a lot of the characters in this line have blind sight, so um, they're able to really sense where you are, no matter if you know, you've know you blown the candles out or not. Okay, challenge rating, um, 11, um, you're getting 7200 XP, this is, okay, this is, you know, something, if I were a DM, I would really play around with this, because this is assuming a party of 4 at level 10, so if you... Who knows where your party is at, right? So play around with this as you see fit. And the health too, I mean, um, yeah, kind of whatever you feel is gonna work there, um, feel free to change that, you know? This is your game, so this is just a suggestion. Any of this stuff, honestly, uh, change whatever, I don't you know. <clears throat> okay, um, let's get into her uh, bio here. What I've started doing this time is, instead of just listing sort of her traits and like her, uh, you know, things to uh, kind of act out as you encounter her is actually just add a bit of uh, backstory um, and just a bit. I mean, it's only two paragraphs here, so let's uh, let's just have a look. Once a dedicated cleric, Silent Sister Mary exists now as a shackled spirit. Eternal service is her debt to pay. Muted and withheld from the world she had known, she speaks now only by the look in her eyes. Her silence has become a harrowing omen of the suffering that is to come. Okay, her past life is now less than a distant... Oh, typo there, gonna have to uh, upload this file again. Is less than a distant memory. All that remains of Mary, the spirited cleric, is the pendant around her neck, marked with the initials SSW. Now those aren't her initials, those are... Um, I imagine them to be uh, the initials of her uh, 
father or maybe her mother. I don't know. I kind of was thinking like, well, you know, you can. There's a few ways to encounter, to handle this encounter. You kill Mary, right, and you uh, you loot the dead, and you know, you go about your way. Um, she's got this this pendant, you know, so she's kind of a lost, you know, she's kind of a, on her crusade and, you know, she fell under control, right? So I wanted to have an item that had a bit of backstory, this SSW as initials on there, that is something when you receive it, it's like, oh, okay, uh, maybe I can return this to somebody. Like maybe somebody might want to know what happened to Mary. And if you return this uh, item to them, um, maybe that would mean something. Maybe that would take you on another journey somewhere else and lead you into something else. So I just added a bit of initials um, to the necklace so that you could use it as kind of an item to drive a new, uh, some kind of new quest uh, and do with those initials what you, what you see fit. But I, I would, like, I might, you know, lead her back to a, you know, a town nearby, you know, see if, um, yeah, see if you can ask some NPCs about this SSW and maybe you lead back to her father, or maybe you give it back to him and you know, he gives you something in return or some kind of tidbit. Um, yeah, I would, you know, if I were you know, designing a full campaign, which I may even do, but I just haven't had the time to really <laughs> dive deep into side quests with these characters yet, so. But I'm leaving it open. -ended. Anyway, let's move on. Um, white Hush, okay. <clears throat> in a moment of silence, a dull ringing is noted. Its sharpness develops with each passing moment. The shrill advance of chaotic noise is heard by all. Speech becomes difficult to comprehend, lost in the storm of shrill static. Even internal thought proves difficult to ascertain, and finally, in her presence, all sound is dissolved. Okay. <clears throat> Within 75 feet of Silent Sister Mary, the effects of White Hush are audibly perceived. So as you are getting near this character, um, the, the PCs are going to start feeling, they're going to start noticing something, you're going to describe to them um, something audible, this, this white noise. Um, and you can even, you know, as they approach um, this character, you can dial it up on them, and even to the point where okay within 25 feet you're in her like kind of direct presence now all become definite so yeah and when you're when you're in her presence you can't communicate verbally you know you're gonna have to pantomime or maybe you've got telekinetic powers and it doesn't matter maybe you're using the uh that uh, uh what the hell is it called the mirror uh I can't, it, was a, it was an item from uh, last uh, release, uh, but that mirror has got, you know, if you use a soul, you can te uh, communicate telepathically. Maybe you're using that thing when she's around too. Um, so that's what you got to deal with while you're engaged, you know, with this, uh, with this kind of uh, battle here. So anyway, Spectre's Haste, Mary Rolls Initiative um, at Advantage. Uh, maybe I should say advantage at initiative, but anyway, so when you're when you first encounter her, she gets an advantage there to see to try to go first. Like I didn't know if I commented on. Let me scroll up here. Her speed, you know, she's kind of a quick character. Forty feet is pretty quick. I think it's the fastest character I've um, written yet. So yeah, um, she also gets initiative. So good luck. Um, leeching Aura. Mar Mary's healing incites a life-stealing aura. All figures within 10-foot radius of Mary, as she is, as she is healing, roll a 1d4. And she's healing quite a bit. You know, she's got this sword here that has uh, healing properties, right? So as she's healing, uh, remove hit points equal to the outcome of this roll in the form of radiant damage and add those to Mary's healing value. So you don't, it's kind of, uh, it's got its own direct role here. Uh, it's not, it's not a ton, but it's, you know, it's kind of an annoyance. Um, her game, she's, it's kind of a close game and um, you get punished for kind of uh, staying uh, engaged uh, adjacently to her. Okay, let's move on. Mary's Crescent. Um, I think I just expanded on the card a little bit here because as she uses it, it might be a little bit different than your typical PC. 
Okay, embedded within Mary's Crescent Edge are five enchanted stones. We talked about that a little bit. Each one acts as a container of radiant energy to be stored and consumed at will. Any physical damage dealt in a single attack action is absorbed and stored within a vacant stone unless all five are already occupied. Okay, I'll just stop for a second. So what I would do, the way I would play this is, you know, you've got this weapon just on your notepad, just, you know, maybe like make like five circles and, you know, use this as a kind of uh, an extra, you know, pool of, uh, pool of energy for you to kind of consume at your own will here. Okay, so you've got these five stones that you can use to your advantage. Record the outcome of and if you're a DM, you gotta do this for her too, so that's their playing, so it's a little bit more overhead, but, well, she's a boss, so there you go. Record the outcome of each attack action uh, in up to five slots, we talked about that. Refer to this when casting Streaming Hail or Anima Strike, those, yeah, you gotta consume a slot to use these actions, <clears throat> which she will, okay, and I listed them here again. Okay, um, one action that isn't attached to that blade is Undying Flurry, and yeah, oh, I'm seeing another typo here. I gotta update this. Um, Undying Flurry. Uh, with, so up to five times you can use this, okay? With a successful strike, Mary may take an additional attack action. Um, each new attack roll must be made for each new strike. Mary may attack up to five times in accession. So you get, you can start to chain your actions here. Um, you know, you hit somebody, you don't get to just like apply damage five times, but you know, if, if it's a success, then she will be, you know, attacking again immediately. Okay, so she's like kind of this really speedy ghost uh, character. And this way, and five, you know, so she can essentially, if she's um, hitting each time, she can charge up her, uh, she can charge up her, um, um, sorry, her, her crescent in uh, yeah in one encounter right away or one action basically right away. So as you encounter her, she's um, gonna have. Uh, I would assume she has no charges, and then on her first strike, maybe she'll have anywhere from one to five. So anyway, so that's kind of yeah, I'm painting the butt. Uh, streaming hail again. Uh, Mary placed her hand on the crescent blade. The embedded stone reflects a brilliant shimmer of violet light. Magic restores her health points equal to the value held within the selected stone. This is considered an act of healing. And I called that out there because that way you know when she's healing, she also does leeching aura. And if you're within, you know, if you're next to her while she's doing streaming hail, it's also a little bit of an attack. I mean, it's just a d4, it's not a lot, but you're gonna suffer a little bit of radiant damage uh, if you're standing next to her as she's casting this. Okay, Anima Strike. Mary clutches her, cre her crescent blade in both hands, takes focus, activating Streaming Hail. Uh... Oh, I'm gonna change this. Whoopsie daisies, this should say Anima Strike. My mistake. Add the energy contained in any one stone embedded in the crescent blade uh, to her next damage roll. Uh, just as I said, uh, so you're gonna cast Anima Strike, pick one of those slots, take the damage, any one you want, uh, add that to your damage, and then, uh, yeah, you can add that radiant damage to the end. Um, so if she's doing, whatever she's doing with her slashing, yeah, that's a different damage type, so this will be, if they're blocking, you know, if they're slashing resistant, they're still gonna take the radiant, vice versa, so just more likely to kind of hit, seep through there. <clears throat> okay, uh, legendary, her legendary action, Spectral Dash. Once per turn, Mary may in instantaneously shift her physical form up to 15 feet away, so up to three squares away. This does not interrupt actions in progress, so she does it any time. You know, she can use this to disengage if she wants to, once per turn, okay. This ability can be used to engage multiple opponents during multi-attacks. Mary cannot move through physical objects or characters. Any disengagements do not incur opportunity attacks as a result, as a result of spectral dash. So she can, so she's got five attacks here. She could do one, two, three, 
spectral dash and then hit somebody else who's a few squares away so you don't want to if you're you really would do want to try to maintain your distance from mary all of her attacks are kind of close range stuff she doesn't have any uh attacks at range aside from being able to dash kind of instantly here um to close that distance so okay so your disengagements do not uh incur opportunity of attacks you know if she's dashing away from you you don't get to take uh, an attack on her mary cannot move through physical objects uh yeah i still see her as a physical character so she's not you know going through walls or anything like that with this um yeah and yeah so like i said once per turn she gets to do this uh she can use it i mean maybe you can get creative with it but the two i think main uses are going to be to you know parlay a second character with her flurry um or if you're trying to attack her she kind of gets to escape an action once per turn you know she can dash out of when, when you're trying to attack her at any time she can just dash out of there and not take that hit so yeah so that's her it's kind of like i said a lot of these attacks are you know intended to be annoying she doesn't have a ton of health so if you get a few good blows in uh, it's going to uh, you're gonna get that loot man so there you have it that's um that's Mary, and uh, here she is. Here's the uh, here's the final art. Um, yeah, this is her kind of in the tower. Uh, you know the the uh, the reanimation master's tower. She's. Uh, I imagine she's. You're kind of encountering her on the way up. You know, we have the stairs here that lead up off to the side, standing kind of near a window here. It's really creepy. Uh, out there, it's, it's pretty barren land surrounding the tower, so there's like you know some trees you know creeping in here, but there's no leaves on them or anything. And she's got these uh, you know bright red candles illuminating her. She's kind of got this whole red theme going on. So uh, that's it. That's that's uh, Sister Mary. I hope I explained all the uh, details of uh, her kit. And uh, thanks for uh, watching, thanks for playing, thanks for supporting, really appreciate it, everybody. And until um, next, next release, which is uh, the Legions of Cursed Death, these guys are like a uh, group of kind of like skeleton badasses who you will approach, you know, on your way to, um, on your way to a uh, boss or kind of a major encounter such as this. So it's gonna be more of like a small squad of, kind of uh, undead uh, yeah attackers that we'll have to deal with and it'll be very it'll be pretty um, yeah it's gonna be pretty physical based damage I would say in, that, in those encounters and maybe maybe those will be paired with a boss who knows we'll, we'll figure it out still working on it um, the bonus release is coming really soon and that's gonna be sort of another take on the Legion of Death uh, like an undead uh, kind of skeleton warrior kind of dude and uh, yeah if you're subbed um, on June 1st you're gonna get that model for free you know it's not a it's not part of the release it's just an extra model I just wanted to be able to do a cool little side model uh, to like really flesh out some of the minions and some, make some different encounters so there you have it thanks again and uh, we'll catch you next time later